You may notice that both our seats don't look quite stock. They aren't. This is an ostrich. Uh, <laughs> Corbin. This is an ostrich Corbin and mine's a cowhide. We got this for real cheap. It was a steal, couldn't turn it down before Devin bought the bike. When my oldest son still owned this bike. Oof. This thing weighs quite a bit more than a little Honda. Well, good morning, everybody. I've been out here fussing around for the last half hour trying to figure out all this stuff that goes with a GoPro. <laughs> and this is an old, old GoPro. I just kind of inherited. It's not even mine, but it's never used, so they said I could use it. Um, this morning, I think we're going to do an oil change. Uh, I got to do it anyway, and I figured why not, why not video it? Uh, I'm sure some of you are. <laughs> Pretty, pretty green at all of this. Um, we'll just go for it. Anyway, as you all noticed in past videos, I've got a, a lift in my shop. I was very fortunate to get that for a little of nothing. A lot of you, or I would say most of you, do not have a, a lift, but you may have other kinds of lifts. Uh, what I used for years, was this other floor type model. You've probably seen them around. That's this gizzy here. It works. You can get an Excelsior on it. I had to modify a little bit and extend uh, the steel out because the frame on the uh, Excelsior Henderson is wider than a Harley and this one was built for a Harley. But it works. But my back won't allow me to work on that. It got to be a real challenge. I couldn't work on uh, Excelsior Henderson is very long without my back getting pretty cranky and I had to sit on the floor and it gets cold here and it's no fun to sit on a cold floor. So I'm going to get this thing strapped in and we'll go for it. All right, so the, we got an oil filter here behind this cover. Uh, notice on mine, I did this on my own because uh, the heat issues we've talked about before. I've spaced this uh, oil filter cover. You can see it's, and it allows the air back underneath there. And it's just another little cooling thing. Uh, I don't know that it's all that important today anymore that we got the tunes and oil coolers but uh, in the old days we were doing anything we could do to cool them off. So I spaced it and then we're going to get under here. Hopefully I can get that on the camera. We got a couple oil, uh, drain plugs under there. So let's see what we can do. And of course my shop's a mess. Here it is. One of these days I'm gonna take some time out and clean my shop up again. Oops. <laughs> if it ain't one thing, it's another. <clears throat> Need my pick got these hot toppers on mine that were given to me as a gift a long time ago and I worked on somebody's bike these hot toppers are plastic chrome chrome plated plastic and oh, I'm missing one missing two they don't stay on very good they have a tendency to crack and then they fly off they look cool I like the looks of them but I've been thinking about going to Big master car and getting some of their uh, stainless steel toppers instead.
they seem to sit better. The McMaster car, they got a lot of, I use them a lot for bolts and stuff. They got all these bolts, if you lose bolts or break bolts or whatever, they got them all. And I like that place because they, uh, they send it out immediate. They'll send you out a whole box of bolts or one or two, whatever you want. It gets kind of pricey for shipping for one or two bolts, but. It's a nice place to get bolts. I don't have a local resource, not without driving 20 miles. And there's my oil filter. My spacing I used is a, just a bunch of washers that I, <laughs> it looks kind of sloppy, but I just grill glued them in there. They're stainless steel uh, washers. I spaced it out about a quarter inch. And that's what keeps it, uh, keeps it open, lets air flow through here. Makes it a little bit cooler. Not, don't know that it's all that important anymore. So there's the oil cooler, it's a Wix. Oil cooler, oil filter, it's a Wix. I'm big on Wix and uh, back in the old days, when we first started with these bikes, we had the, I call them the oil wars on uh, the Yahoo site, the resource board, and lots of discussion about oils and lots of arguments and some people got pretty, pretty upset about it. Everybody thinks their oil's the best and oil filters and blah, 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 and it's not that big a deal. I mean, everybody's got their preference, so just pick what you want, you know? Gonna have to get a rag, because that's dribbling out of there. can't pre-fill these oil filters because it sits sideways. I'm kind of big on that. I don't like dry starts, but on these you, you probably get a little in there, but it's probably going to come out by the time you get it on there. And there you go. That's where the oil filter goes. We'll get that on. I have put these on before and had them dribble a little bit, weep a little bit, and then I had to pull the cover back off and retighten it down. And then I did the biggest no-no of all. I didn't put any oil on that. I like getting a little oil in there because these sandcast blocks, actually any motor for that matter, but for sandcast blocks, they seem to absorb the oil and if you put a seal against it, it really locks up hard. In a previous video, I talked about how hard some of these bolts come out of these and I believe it's because of the sandcast and it just sucks away all the oil away from them. All right, and now we get underneath there. And I never remember the size, so we'll have to, uh... Okay, looks... Three quarter hit. Three quarter is not it. Let's be seven sixteenths. I think it's an inch. It is. Okay, so the back one's inch. Got that one. Let's find that one now. That one feels like like a 5.8, the front one. Try the three quarter again on it. Not. Okay. Let's 
11 sixteenths, maybe. Five eighths is the front one. Inch on back, five eighths on the front. Okay. So I use these old uh, shelf trays to get underneath there. They fit perfect. My lift, um, I have to put these spacers on here to get it high enough to get these trays underneath. Then when I get the bike on the ground, then I pull these, uh, these spacers out, and then I can roll the bike off of it. It's not a big deal, it just looks a little awkward. These were used in, the, in a warehouse scenario for holding materials and stuff, but they work really good for catching oil. Remember, I gotta get my stool. Get you a shot under here. There, you can see it. There's the one inch, and there's the five eight right there. one a few years ago stripped out so I had to get a time cert in it and I think you heard me talking about those in a previous video this big one on the back stripped out stripped the thread sand cast again keep that in mind once I got the time cert in there it quit leaking but I, actually the threads bit and it worked Here we go. You can see the oil running in there. This is the Napa one. <clears throat> and uh, it's magnetic. Oil don't smell bad at all. I don't know how many miles I got on there. I went to Dell's and rode around. I might have, I'm not sure. I might have 5,000 miles on it from the summer rides. No metal to speak of on there, that's pretty clean. One of these times I'll work on something in here on video and I'll have the shop all cleaned up and I'll look all pristine and efficient. <laughs> we'll see about that. I'm not very efficient. All right, so that one's still running as you can see. Oh yeah, what I was talking about earlier is, you gotta remember, um, you'll never get all four quarts out of there. It's just, it's not gonna happen. Uh, by the design of the cavities that this stuff sits in, you just can't get all the oil out. But your manual says, four quarts and the bike does hold four quarts you just can't get it all out and that's our puke issue you overfill it it's going to puke so as I said in the previous videos also 
Start at three quarts and four ounces. Get to know your bike. Know your bike well. All right, here's the front one. This is the 5 8 one. And looks pretty good. And a little bit of stuff on there, but nothing I'm worried about. No big chunks of anything. It looks like normal wear and tear. I um, understand my bike's got 40 some thousand on I think 45, 42,000, something like that. So that's really pretty good looking for uh, shiny sparklies in the oil or on the magnet or whatever. I think that magnet's really a smart move. Uh, I'd put that on everything if I just take the time and buy them and do it, but right now I just do it on my bike. So they're both draining. Front one's still dribbling. And the back one. You can see it. These will get so full and then we'll put them back in there. I use AMS oil. Um, <laughs> I don't want to get into oil wars, but Mobile One makes a great 2050. Um, I prefer the AMS oil just because that's kind of what everybody's recommending. And so that's what I use. It's kind of pricey. Um, Jeff Brown, a buddy of mine in Lincoln here, he uses, uh, he doesn't use, he uses AMS oil, but he gets a good deal on them. He's not a dealer, but he gets dealer price on it and free shipping and stuff. So I buy all my oil from him he ends up buying a couple cases every year for keep me and my nephew Devin in oil and himself. And I run it in my lawnmower and my old tractor and stuff. Uh, I'm not sure if V-Twin is a big deal. I think it is. It's a different temperature oil, I think. But it says that in Mobile One has a, also a 2050 V-Twin. Oh, I need to talk about that a little bit. I got one of the original quartz from the factory. Uh, you can still find this. I've actually in the last year seen a case of this stuff sold. Um, this was the recommended oil at the time. It's 2050. It's for Excelsior Henderson. You don't want to use this stuff. This is a dinosaur oil. It's a, you don't want to use dinosaur oil. The bikes can't handle it. It breaks down too quick. And uh, the AMS oil obviously is full synthetic. If you're going to use the dinosaur oil, I don't care if it's Havlin or whatever brand you want to use. And it's my motorcycle oil, don't use car oil. It ain't got enough uh, zinc in it. Motorcycle oil has still got zinc in it. And so does diesel oil. I don't recommend using diesel oil in them. Um, I, it's not heavy enough, I don't think. Still draining both of them. They weep for a while. Uh, back to the how much you put in there. Three quarts and four ounces is a nice place to start if you're not used to your bike. Uh, get to know your bike. Some of the bikes will take more, some will be even less. It'll be a lot closer to three quarts. Uh, don't worry about running that short of oil. With a little experience I've learned is that um, like Hondas, a lot of Hondas for a long time only ran a quart in them. A lot of Japanese bikes did. And you could ride the Dickens at them. And they ran them on uh, dinosaur oil. They didn't have synthetic oil back then. 
and they, they did fine. They also cooled much more efficiently than these, but they, they didn't break down oil near as fast. Um, so 2050, synthetic. You want to use that, um, preferably motorcycle oil, because it's got zinc in it. You want zinc, got to have zinc. If you aren't using motorcycle oil and you're not using 25, uh, if you're not using synthetic motorcycle oil that's got zinc in it, you can buy zinc additive uh, from several places. Um, NAPA, that kind of thing. It's, I can't remember what they call it, ZZDEP or something like that. But it works. It, it'll add zinc to your oil. There were a lot of guys that were running the zinc additive to their oils thinking that motorcycle oil didn't have zinc in it. Or near enough. And uh, Jamie Jones pretty much told everybody to calm down that it, there's plenty of zinc in the motorcycle oil. All right, we'll put this cover back on, let that oil drain. Man, is this bike dirty. Jeez. good. I spilled all my bolts on the floor. I'm not sure how much can be seen on the camera. I think I'm going to get some of the McMaster car dust covers for these bolts. They just stay on better and they don't look bad. They aren't shiny like chrome. They're shiny like stainless steel, but that's good enough. It's not like my bike's a show bike by any means. Careful when you tighten your bolts up. Like I said, this is sand cast. You can strip them out. And then you'll have to put a time cert in there and it's not hard to do, it's just another thing you gotta do. All right, I'll put my two hot toppers I got left for this. I'll put them on top where everybody can see them. <laughs> like this is good looking, as filthy as it is. <laughs> All righty. We're pretty much drained, I think. Just dripping, just dripping, cool. Get the back one. Shove that out a little bit so I can reach in there. There it is. big wrench. I 
Like I said, this back one's a time cert. I don't think I could strip that out if I wanted to. Not that I'm going to try. under there. Push a little more. Some guys will actually let their bikes sit overnight um, and drain. I've heard about that. That's fine. You'll get that little bit more out of there of quote unquote contaminated oil. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, I don't I don't do that. It doesn't mean I'm doing anything wrong. It just means I won't take the time to do it. I got too much other stuff going on. But you might get another half cup out of there. She'll sit there and drip for hours. I've, I have done it before and just drip and drip and drip. And it's not like it's running down off the walls because this bike hasn't been started in three weeks and it's been up here on the rack for two or three days. It's just dripping out at the bottom of the cavities. I gotta be careful on this one so I don't strip it. All right, plugs are back in. My hands are all oily. All right, we got the cover back on. We got both drain plugs back on. Now I'm gonna go get my funnel. mess with you as I told you you want to start around three quarts and a few ounces you know four ounces my bike I have uh, modified it and if anybody wants to know how to do that or how I did it maybe you don't want to do it um, email me I'll, I'll, I'll explain it to you Anybody has seen oil on the floor from a leak, it always looks like it's cups or gallons of oil, and it's just a little bit. So instead of three quarts and four ounces, this bike will be getting a full, full four quarts. And I probably could run five in there if I wanted to, the way this modification works. I'm not trying to brag up that modification because I only know like one or two guys that did it and I'm not sure if those guys are even around anymore. I might be the only guy left doing it. But there is a modification you can do if you really want to. I think what I did on that modification, just to explain it a little bit, um, I think there's a better way of doing it. I just never changed it since then. So that's not going to work for camera. I'm not going to do that. Oh, I could do that. That's better. 
I'm sorry guys, I'm not real technical with electronics and stuff, so bear with me. And as expensive as this is, I usually try to get every dribble I can out of there. I think when I buy it from Jeff, I'm just not selling to everybody. Don't be trying to get a hold of Jeff Brown to get your oil. Uh, I think I pay $11 a quart. You go to the wrong store, it's going to be closer to 13 to 15. Well, there went that. Geez, I've even seen Amsoil on a shelf, you know, in a motorcycle shop for 15 bucks a quart. That gets pricey really quick. I do like Amsoil though, it really holds up well. I got a 36 Ford, I run this very same oil in it because it's got zinc in it. 36 Ford with a flathead motor, and I run it in there. Uh, that that flathead's got a, an oil filter on it, so for you that know what I'm talking about, it, it does have one, so I can use a detergent oil with zinc in it. Flatheads are not supposed to have detergent oils in them if they don't have an oil filter. But my motor's a, a later flathead. It's not a 36 era. So there I go, I got four quarts in it. Oh shit. That's not pretty. My seed oiled up. The oil won't hurt the leather. It may create a problem with the stitching, though. Well, you've probably no <laughs> noticed I don't got the bike strap down. This rack or lift works really good as long as I'm not wrenching hard on it. It'll sit there all day long and won't move around. And uh, I'm, if I'm going to be hard pulling on it or pulling the tires off or something off the front end or whatever, I'll, uh, I'll strap her down. As you can see, I got tons of straps. That's not a big deal. Being this is just a simple oil change, not that big a deal. Okay, so. You're uh, changing your oil and you want to get get a full and like I said, three quarts, four ounces is a nice place to start. The goal I think you can see that. You can see those hash marks. There's five hash marks. This is a 99, so the hash marks from what I understand are in a different place than a 2000. But in my book, if you're anywhere in the hash marks, you, you've got plenty of oil in it. If it's down at the ad, you may want to think about putting some oil in there. If, if it pukes, 
and you know you got three quarts in there, four plus or minus ounces, and it's still not in the hash marks. I don't know what to tell you. Um, that's your goal to get to there and not have it puke. So you got kind of two goals going. I can't remember if I talked about the oil dance. I think I'll run through that real quick. That's what I call it. It's how you check your oil. And previously, if you remember, I talked about um, the sight glass that Bobby Baldwin had out there. It would go right here. There was a sight glass he came up with, a polished aluminum. It was really pretty. Great little doodad for prettiness. That does not, that sight glass will not give you an accurate reading, not even close. Um, I got, I know that from past experience. I'm not going to tell that whole story again. But the oil dance. So you got your oil in there. And you don't know, you just took, went for a ride, pretty good long ride. And uh, you want to know the next time you start it if it's got enough oil in it. And the procedure for the oil dance is you warm the bike up, make sure she's warmed up. If you don't have a pickup tube, don't warm it up on the kickstand. And then once it's warmed up, in other words, uh, the warm-up mode on your CPU on the computer is, is down to normal idle. That tells you it's warmed up. Get on the bike, set it straight up and down, rev it to 2,500 RPM for 45 seconds. And just hold it there for 45 seconds, about 2,500 RPM. Shut it off, put it on the kickstand, pull your dipstick out, and that's going to be your reading. If you just do it without warming it up or starting the bike, it's good, the oil on the dipstick's going to be all over the place. It'll show six inches high, or it may not show any. It depends what cavity the oil's in. It's just it's kind of a mystery. The, the oil dance that we do to check your bike works. We know it works. Uh, it's been tried and true many, many times. We, we, just from experience of being around the bikes, we know that that, that works. So that's it. Um, don't know nothing else about an oil change to tell you and some little bits and pieces here and there. I hope this helps. Thanks guys.